Hi, this is Dr. Ram from Medmanus here. So we are going to discuss about the pressure volume loop in a cardiac cycle. So what is a cardiac cycle? So he, you hear one heartbeat S1, S2 and there are some cardiac events in between and you hear the next heart sound S1, S2 and what are all the events that is present between the heartbeats? That is cardiac cycle. Okay. So in this pressure volume loop, I'm going to compare the volume of left ventricle. I've taken in the X axis and the Y axis. I have taken the pressure of the left ventricle. Okay. Now, before we see the graph, I want to tell you one very important point. Okay. Look at this point. The opening and the closing of a valves depends on the pressure gradient between the chambers the pressure gradient between the chambers. If you understand this point, this session is going to be very easy. So for example, if the left atrium has higher pressure than the left ventricle, the mitral valve opens and the blood moves from left atrium to left ventricle. Okay, another instance. What happens if the left ventricular pressure is very high than the atrium and the iota? So your aortic valve opens and the blood moves out and your mitral valve is closed because the increased pressure in the left ventricle pushes the mitral valve to close. Let's move on to the graph. Okay, first note the point A. So this point A, you have the 50 ml of blood in the left ventricle, that is the lowest volume and the pressure is around zero. And this lowest volume in the blood is end systolic volume, ESV. What is end systolic volume? So see this picture. At the end of the systole, at the end of the full contraction of ventricle, what is the volume of blood present inside the ventricle? Normally around 50 ml, that is the end systolic volume. And note that in the end systolic volume, that is at the point A, see this picture, your mitral wall opens because at this point, your left atrial pressure is higher than your left ventricular pressure. So the mitral wall opens and the blood starts filling up. So the blood starts filling up slowly. There is an increase in the volume from 50, so over 100. So at point B, the mitral wall closes because your left ventricular pressure becomes higher than the left atrial pressure. So the mitral wall closes. So remember, at the point A, the mitral wall opens, blood starts filling up in the ventricle, at the point B, mitral wall closes. Now, we'll go to the second phase. Look at this picture. Note that your aortic wall is closed and the mitral wall is also closed. Now, the depolarizing current passes through the ventricles. So the ventricle starts to contract. A slight contraction. This is very important phase because the left ventricular pressure goes high than the aortic pressure so that the aortic wall can be opened. So this phase is called isovolumetric contraction. Isovolume means there is no change in the volume. Why? Because both the valves are closed. So the ventricles contract against the closed valves so there is isovolumetric contraction phase. Now look at the graph. From the point B, the volume stays a constant, but the pressure goes on increasing. So when the pressure goes over 80, so here the aortic pressure will be normally around 80. This isovolumetric contraction phase makes the left ventricular pressure to be over 80 that opens the aortic wall resulting in ejection. So we are coming to the third phase that is ejection phase. Here the aortic wall is opened and the blood starts to move from left ventricle through the aorta into the systemic circulation. Now see the graph here. So at this point, at point C, the pressure in the left ventricle will be over 80. That opens the aortic wall and the blood starts to move. This is ejection phase. We have two phases of ejection. One is the rapid ejection phase and the other is a slow ejection phase because initially the blood rushes into the iota because of a bigger pressure gradient. 
So we call it as rapid and then the blood flow slows down, slow ejection phase. Now, very important point. The peak ventricular pressure is attained in the rapid ejection phase. So over like around 120, the peak ventricular pressure is attained. Okay. Look at this picture. Now we are coming to the phase 4 and final phase. At the point D, so here, look at the picture. So you have isovolumetric relaxation phase. What do you mean by that? Both the walls are closed in this phase. Now there is a repolarizing current that relaxes your left ventricle. So left ventricle starts relaxing. With the, both the walls closed, will that be change in the volume? No. There will be no change in the volume, but there is a decrease in the pressure. At the end of isovolumetric relaxation phase, your left atrial pressure will be higher than your left ventricular pressure that opens the mitral wall and again the filling phase starts. This is the volume pressure loop in the cardiac cycle. So what are the four phases? Phase 1 is a ventricular filling phase. Phase 2 isovolumetric contraction here the pressure will be going higher but the volume stays the same and number three is ejection phase this phase is rapid ejection phase and this is slow ejection phase note that here rapid ejection phase the peak ventricular pressure is attained and at d you have your from d to a you have your isovolumetric relaxation phase then point a the end systolic volume is reached now, what are all the questions that can be asked with this graph? Actually, we are going to see about some valvular pathology, cardiac failure, how this loop changes. So, we'll see that in the next session. In this session, we are seeing the normal physiology of a heart. Okay. Now, how do you calculate the stroke volume in this picture? First of all, what is stroke volume? At a single contraction, at a single contraction, look at this picture, the amount of blood that is sent through the iota into systemic circulation so what is the amount of blood that is pumped out in a single contraction is stroke volume is stroke volume so this is point b is your end diastolic volume so the stroke volume is end diastolic volume minus end systolic volume end diastolic volume minus end systolic volume so this is the stroke volume Okay, now, now two more questions. Where is S1 here in this pressure volume loop? Note that it is your closure of a wall that creates sound. So here the mitral wall is closed. Here mitral wall opens, aortic wall opens, aortic wall close. Now you can guess. So it's a closure of a wall that creates heart sound because opening is a smooth process. So at point B is your S1. So here you hear your S1. To point B you hear your S1. At point D you hear your S2. That's it. Okay. So next session we'll see about some pathology. For more questions you can follow the Instagram ID given below. Thank you.